I am the evil blue clicky switch, and I have stolen the ultimate keycap. You cannot stop me now, Monzor Panda. I'm not just any panda. I'm a holy panda, and I'm here with backup. My friend Ink and Xylent, you're going down. Not before you hear the sound of my people. Oh, hi. Um, Healy here, and it's time for uh, This Week in Keyboards, which is, um, you know, your weekly news roundup. And there's a whole lot of interest checks. I uh, don't mind all of this stuff. Uh, before this episode, though, you can check out the sponsor for this episode, Zeal PC, where you can get some Roselios and Saccharose, which is for a lovely pink to match your board. Don't forget, he has some awesome, amazing switches like the V2 Zelios. I'm a big fan of the 62 and 78 gram versions and Zalan switches. You can check out the switches through my affiliate link in the link below. Yeah. So, this week in keyboards. First up in the news by Rooster Cogburn is GMK Dark, which is a GMK take on the classic black on dark gray. Normally, this colorway is popular as a PBD set, but now we might have our chance in the future to see it in shiny ABS glory. I like the idea of this set, and I like that Rooster is planning on keeping the total amount of keys down by not including any color accents. If you already have other GMK key sets, BAM! you have your color accents. I really like the idea of this set. I think it's one of the best bets we've had for something like this since the failure that was GMK Doom. The base kit will have text only mods, but there'll be a separate kit for icon mods uh, with the bottom row icons. There will be a non-standard kit that Rooster needs a bit of feedback on and ISO will be its own separate kits. So far, so good. I'm curious to see what we'll be seeing for prices and vendor, so keep your eyes on this if you're looking for a simple and clean set with potential. On the other spectrum, far from simple and clean is complicated and messy. Those are two adjectives that you might use to describe how you feel when you look at the Space Cadet keyboard with all those crazy sub-legends. Those keycaps, of course, from the Symbolics board um, is possibly coming back because Kono wants to revive it as a modern keyboard, the Impa Club symbolic keyboard. While it's still in its preliminary stages of the intersect, they do have a waitlist available to join if you are looking for more information in the future. From what I know, they do plan on keeping the same layout generally or of the, of the same original keyboard, but with some modern additions like convenient window and arrow key placements. I hope they can capture the splendor of the original symbolics board, with a modern reimagining. Although the symbolic space cut board isn't the only thing Impa Club has been working on a modern reimagining of. They also just dropped info on their new switch, the Silo Beam Switch, a beam spring switch for the modern era. So what are the specs that we know so far? Well, the switch works via a beam spring click mechanism, has Hall effect sensing, Cherry MX mount stems, 14mm by 14mm plate cutout, SMD LED support, it's dust resistant housings, uh, contactless PCB mounting. Wow. That's quite a list of things to talk about, and I highly recommend reading the post linked down below in the description, but as a very quick overview, a beam spring sp uh, switch works with a strip of sheet of metal held under tension forming a sight bow. When force is exerted downwards onto the bow, the beam will push the tension until there's enough to buckle the beam in the other direction. This provides a nice tactile feel and a very sharp audible feedback, hence why beam spring keyboards are so popular today. A modern implementation in a switch as small as the MX switch is honestly incredible, and I'm curious to see the engineering inside that made it all happen. The Hall Effect portion is using a magnetic sensor to detect how far the beam has moved, and this is how the switches will be contactless with the PCB, as well as not compatible with any existing PCB. Cool thing, especially with the, uh, especially with the firmware, is you can program the PCB to detect any actuation at any distance of travel along, which is, yeah, it's pretty cool. Speaking of cool, check out that crazy force curve. Like, holy moly, it looks amazing. Amazing. These switches will be available on their Keystone Analog Mechanical Keyboard, which you can join the waitlist for. The most controversial thing for enthusiasts is probably the fact that the first keyboard that these new switches will be on will be a full-size keyboard. Still, I'm really excited, and hopefully I can get a sample to share with you all in the near future. If you're thinking you don't want a full-size keyboard, you may have to do a long think about what keyboard will be next. 
you may have to give yourself a long think. But if you're thinking for a 65%, then maybe the think 6.5 degree by Old Cat is what you're thinking of. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it is. But this is a 6.5 degree typing angle keyboard, and it's available as either a polycarbonate or aluminum board. Although I think the polycarbonate option will be the most popular choice in terms of layouts. There are four main supported layouts with the differences in the bottom row, as well as whether or not you want a badge on the side. Each kit will go for approximately $300 before shipping and will include a case, a weight, a badge if applicable, a PCB, and the hardware needed for assembly like screws and rubber feet. The keyboard will be produced by Gray Studio, who have produced a few boards now, mainly the COD 67 and the HB85. Fulfillment is to start approximately four months after payment is collected. The PCB is, of course, programmable with QMK and features a centered USB Type C port as well as underglow. Yay. There's also a limited edition all brass version for those baller enough to grab one, but I think, once again, the best bet is polycarb or aluminum, probably polycarb. I think the design of the case is pretty clean, which makes this keyboard probably pretty popular for its price. You have until the end of the month if you want to get in to the group buy. Up next by Garrett of Dixiemech is the interest check for GMK8008. Inspired by a sports bra, this set features a dark gray, a dark navy gray, a light blue gray, and a bright pink. The renders by Younglad give a pretty good idea of how the set will look, and I think it has something nice going for it with that super bright neon highlighter pink. I think the icon mods would be a good choice for this set um, should it come to fruition. Currently, Garrett is deciding if the ISO keys should be paired with the numpad instead of the base, which I don't think that's a bad idea. I think that's a pretty good way to do it. I think this set will turn out decently, although I think, as the audience, we should see the sports brawl that inspired this key set. So Garrett, please deliver. Speaking of seeing the source, the Kepler Space Telescope has let us see wondrous sights through, this, through space for over nine years before being de decommissioned on October 30th, 2018. But too bad it wasn't around long enough to see why people might really like the Kepler TKL by 159. Fortunately, I'm here for that. This TKL features a top made of 6063 aluminum and a brass bottom. At a 7 degree typing angle, the plate options are brass, carbon fiber, FR4, POM, and polycarbonate. And I think they'll be pretty comfortable to type on since the plate will be isolation mounted. The TKL will have support for the H87A PCB and will have a USB breakout board to a Lemo socket. While we don't have a price yet, we do have these nice renders to look at. From the exploded view, we can see the isolation mount is a style of sandwich mount that aims to wedge the typing plate between two materials in order to isolate it from the rest of the case. And you can see that by the fact that the screws that secure the case together completely skip the typing plate entirely. Interesting. I'm curious to see what the price of this keyboard will be. And the fact that it has a aluminum top and brass bottom honestly sounds pretty awesome if you ask me. Although it sounds a bit expensive. We'll see. So Kepler gave us a good look at nonfiction space. But if you're ready for some fictional space battles with Verm, you'll want to take your favorite Frank's pilot with your favorite seasonal waifu 02 with GMK Darling by Zerpocalypse. Using a mix of Pantone, two RAW colors, and a GMK stock color, he has put together a mock-up for GMK Darling, which I think is a pretty okay start. I think there might need to be some more thought with different kits and how things are spread out, but the colors are decent, and I'm hoping though uh, he'll continue on with some nicer renders in the near future. I think a set like this, all icons are way to go, remove the sub-legends of the numpad, and it's going to start looking pretty nice. I'm curious to see how the novelties will turn out on the keycaps, and that's going to be a big deciding factor of this set, I think. Otherwise, yay, more pink. And I guess keeping to a space theme, we have the Intercheck for Project Nebula by Mickey Berry, which is a TKL with a quite interesting side look to it. The prototype seen here is said by Mickey Berry to be a bit too aggressive on the curves. But the final renders are here and they're a bit more accurate to the final product. I like the idea of these curvy sides and Eve Studios has made some decent boards in the past so hopefully this will be another one we can join in on soon. I'm curious to see what the price will be like and if the machining on those curves will impact the price driving it higher than may most people may want. 
Up next is Oblotsky's group by announcement for S.A. Arcane. After the unfortunate failure of Arcane as a DSA set, I think it was a failure at least, I think it fits much better as an SA set to be honest. While the MLQ and prices are still to be announced, the US vendor will be Kono.store and the European vendor will be MyKeyboard.eu. I hope the purple comes out nice and rich because that will be the real A plus color of this set. Also, the novelties are great. While SA isn't my jam, I think this is one of the better SA sets I've seen in a cool minute because that's a cool purple. Up next is something that you may find painful to use. It's the Pain 27 by World Spawn, and here's the second version of it. It's painful to look at because oh, how do you use this? Well, why does it exist? Is this the point where we need to ask not how, but why? The spacebar has glowy bits, so that's pretty cool. A kit with a basic case is $35, and one with a premium is $55. At what point are we going to get an aluminum case with a brass weight for this? Because that's would be going all the way balls to the wall. The Pain 27 will be shipping out in June for those who are into this kind of thing. And well, let me know if you want me to build one up or review one. I might grab one because I don't know, it's content. Next up over at KBD Fans is the group buy for the KBD Fans X Beep Koala Switches. Described as quote, tactile, like the T1 switches, with a 62 gram bottom out force. These switches go for 55 cents each. I've never actually had a T1 switch since they're literally always out of stock for me. So describing the switch to be said to be just like another switch isn't a great way to describe it. How about a force curve graph? <laughs> the group I ends in approximately 25-ish days and there's an unlimited quantity available as long as they hit the 25,000 unit MOQ. If you're wondering what's different between this and standard T1 switches, I'm assuming it's just a color change, so there you go if you're into that kind of thing. But if you're getting those Koala switches, then you might want to grab a key set that matches, and I guess that's what Beep's goal is with the Group I4 EPBT Extended 2048 PBT keycaps. Strongly inspired by Apple's AEK keycaps, this is his modern reimagining of the set, and I think it looks pretty decent. Some of the legends are different from how they used to be on the original AEK sets, but I think it's okay to ha not have it be the original one-to-one -one copy. For a lot of people who like PPT keys, icon modifiers, and narrower looking legends, this set will be a slam dunk. With EBBT having better compatibility than ever before, I think people are going to be really happy with these die subbed keycaps. The key thing is, you know, th the legends don't turn out fuzzy because they'll be even more noticeable when you have nice skinny legends like this. It's going to be running until May 19th with a shipping estimated in August. For most people, I think the base kit will do you great for $75, which depending on your budget, that could still leave you some room for the Icono kit or the Tori kit if you want to get into that Japanese AEK look or that all icon look. Our next topic will bring us to Mass Shop, where the BM43A by BM Workshop has only one day left. This 40% keyboard is available for a cool 90% and features an aluminum case, underglow LEDs, MX and ALP support, QMK support, and a USB-C port. The high-profile case for the price is a pretty nice touch, and I think a lot of people entering the hobby looking at 40% may be pretty impressed with this Mass Shop offering. The layout and compatibility kind of reminds me of the minivan, but having arrow keys, which makes it a worse minivan. It is cheaper though. And that lip on the back right side gives it a little kind of, you know, a canoe-esque look, just a lot less elegant. It's not my cup of tea, but many will find the price quite tempting. While we're on Mashup, they are doing another run of the Mashdrop X Inver Holy Panda Switches, um, which they are priced at over a dollar a switch. So if you want to fill out your standard TKL, you'll need 90 switches at least. Well, you need like 84 to 87, which will cost you $110 before any possible tax or shipping. Yeah, that's quite a bit for a switch, but holy panels are kind of the bee's knees right now for tactility. The previous round had the same switches for a much cheaper price, but I guess that was more of a round one supporter bonus. These switches will be shipping out late July, so if you're looking for a nicely tactile switch that you don't want to mod yourself, that you're okay with waiting for, that you're okay with paying over a dollar for, here you go. For everyone else, just get some Zelios V2. You'll be pretty happy, I'm pretty sure. And now we move on to the official interest check for GMK Olive by Olivia. The Queen of Rose Gold has 
open her palace gates to show us the next decadence that we need in our lives, this delicious olive scent. I'm a big fan of the green use with the modifiers, and I think the green will really make this set. Smartly and rightly so, Olivia has decided to go with Rao colors instead of Pantones, which is easier for GMK to color match. Some of the kit info may change, but we have a pretty good, pretty good idea of where things stand with these sets. I think a point of contention some may have is whether or not novelty, novelties should be included in the base kit or separate. Historically, novelties do add a bit of cost to the uh, sets, but there are times where it works out because you may not have these otherwise. These renders look quite nice, and if you're not looking for a set that's, you know, if you're looking for a set that's not too loudly green, this is going to be a pretty good bet. This is a nice subdued green. Olivia is a great friend of mine, so you can bet that I'll be on in on the set. Last but certainly not least in the news is the interest check for the Norbaforce Mark II by Ryan Norbauer. So why a Mark II version in this case? Well, Real Force has been busy with phasing out the original RF-87U boards and phasing a new Round 2 version. The placement of the microcontroller is slightly different, so Ryan wants to have a version of his case that's able to accommodate the new Real Force keyboards. There's going to be plans for new Cerakote finishing options, better USB-C support um, with the uh, port, and possibly a steel, steel rear cover to increase the weight and reduce interior sound transmission. Ryan is working on improving operational efficiency um, for himself, and sometimes that's understandably means he's going to have less finishes than before. So he's only going to have five finishes planned so far, so he can make each one meet his standards. And if you don't know Ryan, he has some pretty high standards. I think if I could make a recommendation for a key improvement to be made, magnetic screws. Magnetic screws. Unless that's already been addressed, I'm still waiting for my Norba Force to be shipped out, which I'm sure will be very soon, uh, but magnetic screws. It's great that he still wants to make sure that his uh, cases are supported, so thank you, Ryan. That's going to be awesome. Well, that's it for this week in keyboards, but if you have a chance, I'd like you to check out the sponsor Zeal PC, link down below, if you're down to clown um, with some awesome switches. And if you like this content, hit that subscribe button for more videos. Thank you for watching. I have some important things to get to now. Um, don't mind me.